Hey everybody, welcome to this board game life episode number 59 titled That New Game Smell. This is a show about uh, games, board games, tabletop games, card games, miniatures games. What kind of other ones? Video games? I, no, not Aww. those. That's that other show. <laughs> <laughs> The other show before this one, but uh, yeah, this is a show about gaming and uh, anything else we want to talk about. I am one of your fine hosts for today. My name is Rob, and then that sultry voice you just heard, that's my good buddy, Mark. Hello, hello. (laughs) I didn't know you were British. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, is that what it was? (laughs) Yeah, Midwestern British. Something like that. Yeah. For the moment. Anyway, yeah. Anyway, oh, there was something I was going to say. I was thinking about it while we were while we were saying that. Oh, oh yes. So it's it's the show about gaming and smells today. <laughs> For your olfactory senses. Oh, okay. Yeah, I guess if you say so. Yeah. Yeah, I do. Yeah, the yeah, games get you visually. Oh, I yeah. guess in some way they get you, uh, you know, through audio, like maybe the sound of the you know pieces on the board, or like you know people riffle shuffling the the cards. And there's apparently a smell aspect to it as well. But we'll get into that in a little bit. We'll see. I would agree. Yeah. So. Yeah. So let's get rolling. Um, you know, with, with what we've been playing, um, I had a bunch of misfires. I had two misfires where I brought games and we wound up not playing any of them because the people had other stuff in, uh, in mind. And I was actually really looking forward to playing deep dive. That's one of the games that, I got after Gen Con where um, it was one of the games we played at the AEG big game night. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately it was not in the (sighs) big game night box. (laughs) Darn it. Teases. I know. Um, Yeah. Cause we played number drop uh, deep dive, shake that city and waffle time yeah so the game box had uh the number drop it had waffle time and it had something else i don't remember which one it is wasn't shake that city i think i remember you remember you talked about them yeah and there was yeah it was a older game Oh, um, oh, you gave it, it to me. Tiny Towns. Tiny right? Towns. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which is a good game yeah. in itself. But uh, the, the two that I really wanted was uh, Deep Dive. And the I like the Waffle Time. That was a good one. Um, more so, I wanted the, the, the um, Deep Dive. And I had to buy it afterwards. Oh, man. Oh, well. But yeah, I picked it up at my local game store. But anyway, I've been excited to play it. So, uh, I threw it in, uh, my little bag, my small bag, not like the nice bag that you got on the way, but, uh, my small bag and still sitting in China. Yeah. 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 My games may as well have been in China too, (laughs) because all they did was they left my house, they got transported and then we came back and then I was hopeful (laughs) next time I went over there that we do it again, but no, no. Yeah. So, um, what have you gotten to the table in the last two weeks? So I got to preface this. I got to apologize first. <clears throat> I got some coughing going on here and it's, it's like one of those, it's like, I'm fine until I start talking. <laughs> it's like a dry mm-hmm. thing. It's been, so I got a bottle of water here, but it may or may not help. 
So I apologize. I, I can't control it. So maybe you need I will minimize as much as I can. And soothes. And knocks me out. <laughs> A lozenge. <laughs> so I did get. A, I got introduced to a new game. I think I talked about this last time, actually. Yeah, I did. Ended up buying it and playing it a lot more the last couple of weeks, but Seven Wonders Architects. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I did play more of that. I got to finally play my Terraforming Mars, the dice game, and uh, I really enjoyed it. It was, uh, I do like it. I like dice. I don't like the randomness of dice <clears throat> but i like that tactile feel you know it's just like we were talking about a while back with jaipur and the poker chips like i don't want to change out the poker chips for like the deluxe oh, components splendor. because splendor right oh Is splendor yes splendor yeah splendor not jaipur um splendor's got those nice poker chips and it's just like it's just very, there's something very satisfying with those poker chips. And it's the same way I feel about dice. I love rolling dice. I love just shaking them in my hand. And there, I don't know, there's just that tactile feeling of them. Just, I don't know. I like them. So <clears throat> I, I do enjoy, I did enjoy the game, but again, dice can sometimes uh, be a pain um, if you're trying to get certain things and you don't get it. But uh, it was a fun game. I don't know if you've played Terraforming Mars. And I've never, I have Terraforming Mars. I've yet to play it. One of these days real soon, uh, one of the guys in my game group has it um, as well and is going to teach teach it to me. As it is different than the dice game. But uh, they're still very kind of a lot of similarities. It's just variants of the original. The dice game is just a variance of the original. So. But uh, I do want to play it, so hopefully I'll get that out. But the dice game is a lot of fun, and uh, I enjoyed it. I also got um, another new Kickstarter in called Dice Cards. <clears throat> and this one is, I do like this a lot. This um, You can play with a large number of people, and I tried this last week at my gaming group last Wednesday. And it was tough because... Um, I think there's just too many people and, and it, it, you can play like it says, I think eight and up, but really you're limited to eight because they have dry erase cards in the game. And there's eight dry erase markers and there's eight, uh, dice, uh, trackers or, or roll trackers. So you can use like a piece of paper and write it down, uh, on a separate piece of paper. Really. There's not a limit that way, but trying to teach, eight no uh, eight other people how to play when everybody's yeah. cards are different <clears throat> proved a real challenge the game's not hard um it's and it's it's a it's not doesn't take that long to play <coughs> if if you have fewer people so it will get a little longer it's a it's gonna take a in fact they even say you can play a one to 99 players well um I guess you could play 99 if everyone had one card. Um, But the game comes with 50 unique cards, but there's two of every card. Okay, so there's 100 cards in the game. And then you have two dice. One's a red dice, one's a black dice. And what you're going to do is someone will roll both dice, and, and everyone gets six cards um randomly dealt out to you now the reason there's two of every card is that you can play a two-player game and that way you can both have the exact same cards that you're working off of and um or you can just if you got more than that then you just randomly deal out six cards so people will be doing various different things with their cards but essentially you all have six cards you one person rolls the dice that so there's a black and a red some cards will require a black number some will, and uh, and red numbers um others will just require like a number 5 it doesn't matter whether it's red or black so when and, and then you can also combine the so say i rolled a 5 and a 6 i could take i could use a black 5 a red 6 or an 11 
And I can take that number and use that one number on only one of my six cards. So you're choosing where to use the dice roll. Now, there's a lot of different like mini games on the cards. Like one is uh, you're building a pyramid. Okay, so you got to start on the bottom row and there's like four four columns that you got to write a number in. So say I put a one in in one of them and it's like four squares on the bottom of the pyramid. And so I put a, I say, well, I'm going to put a five in there. I'll use the five. And it doesn't matter on this card if it's black or red, it's, you're just picking a number. So then we roll again, right? So I've only wrote that one number on that one card. Now, then the next player person, they roll the dice and we, we do the same thing. Look at what their role is, take what dice we want, which, which one pick a number, either an individual die roll or a combination of the two and place it somewhere on one of our cards. The object is the cards are different. Some will give you tickets um, when you complete certain things or certain um, tasks or goals, if you will, on the card. Now, a ticket at the end of the game, and you keep track of your tickets on this roll tracker, as well as you keeping track of your rolls, because the game goes, you will roll these dice 50 total times. And it sounds like a lot, but it's really not. The game like I said, can go 15 to 30 minutes. Um, and if it's just a two player game, you're going to be around that 15 minute time frame. Um, cause you roll and you're, you're putting your number down and then you're rolling and you're putting your number down and you know, it, there's really not a lot to it. Um, so that's why you, it's important to keep track of your roles. Uh, so you know when the game ends and everyone's doing this and that also helps. And, th- and this is the hardest part of the game is actually keeping track of your dice rolls. <laughs> um, that's, that's, I think what's the most interesting is <coughs> this game. The hardest part is just remembering when, to, whatever you took is to write it down because you'll notice with everyone else, you're like, Oh, all of a sudden they're, they're on roll 15 and you're on 14. You're like, Oh, I must've not wrote something down. And it's important to make sure you're writing them down. So you know, when the game ends, but anyways, um, you keep track of those tickets I mentioned, and at the end of the game, for every every two tickets that you have, you get a victory point. And then as you're completing things on the cards, you're getting points. <clears throat> Some cards will require you to complete the entire card, and they have a little asterisk triangle thing at the top of the card to let you know that to score any points, you're going to have to complete the entire card. Most of the cards will have various different ways to score points um, as you go along. So you're kind of scoring every time. So there's like a, so anyways, at the, po- the bottom of the pyramid, there's, there's four columns in that bottom row. So if I put, a, say I put a fives all the way across, which would be a really bad thing because that means that total is 20 points for that row. Now the row above it, which only has three columns, you now, whatever you put in there has to equal the same total as the bottom. So obviously you get to the top one, you can't put a 20. So you're not going to want to fill that bottom row with fives. Um, In fact, you're going to want to make sure that that bottom row doesn't exceed a total of of 12. Um, Because rolling the two dice, the most you could get is a 12. So you don't want any one of those rows to be over 12. Otherwise, you'll never finish the card. Um, But you'll get points for completing each row of the pyramid. And then if you complete the whole thing, you'll get the bigger amount of points plus tickets. And then there's one, it's like a hill climb or 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 coming down the hill. So you start with like a, a the top of the card, you start with a high number and then you got every number you put on the card next has to be lower than the one above it. And as you get certain ways, you get, you know, the more you put on the card, the more points you get and stuff like that. So it's a very simple game. Each card tells you how to play, tells you how to play the card or what you're to do. And it, it shows you how it scores. And then on the back of the card, it shows you how to score that card. Like actually how, so it's, it's really neat because for someone who's never played, you can look at it and then like, well, I don't understand this. And then you just flip the card over and you can see how they're scoring it. And like they, it's got an explanation on the back. 
So it really helps clarify if there's any kind of questions, but they're very simple little games that you're just trying to get numbers. Um, and uh, you're basically rolling dice and choosing how to use those to best get the max points out of the cards you have. And sometimes you'll have a card uh, that you may not even touch. Some will be like, okay, I, I'm not going to commit to this because I have one that requires I finish the whole card. And it's going to take 15 rolls out of the 50 to complete it. And if, you know, that's if I hit everything I need. And, you know, so it's like, do I want to waste that many of the 50 rolls towards this one card when I could put those towards the others and maybe complete two or three cards? So it's fun. I really like it. It's uh, and I think it's uh, just a great little little game to take along. Nice, but I would re- I don't recommend it in a in a large group because because every card's different. Then you're going to have people going, well, you know, you're trying to answer all these different questions, and it really slows the game down. And I I would probably say keep it at around four is probably the best. You know, four or six max I would say. Um, but if everybody knew how to play, then it's no big deal. So if you had 99 people and all knew how to play, then yeah, it'd be fine. It'd go, it'd be fine. Except for yelling the number out to everybody. And you're like at a bingo hall B12. Yeah. <laughs> so, but, um, let's see what else did I play? I got to play more planet unknown. Nice. Um, <clears throat> I was so happy. I played this Monday night. And, uh, I finally got to win. I've been, I've been teaching people this game and it, and it, it, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't get what it is, but it seems like when other people teach the game, they always win. Every time I'm teaching a game, I always lose. I I know, right. (laughs) But I, I still believe that for me, it's like, I, I'll get distracted. So like with planet unknown, you know, someone will spin the the lazy Susan. They're like, okay, this is the piece I want. So I grab my piece. And while I'm trying to look at my board, someone will be like, well, what do I do? You know, and then so I'm always helping someone else. And then I get back and I'm like, what did I do? Did I do my move? Did I even take my turn? Like, I, <laughs> so it really throws me off. And it's just like, so I'm always claiming that's because I was teaching. That's why I lost. But <laughs> I actually... uh was still teaching the other day. There was five of us playing, but only one, everyone else had played except one guy. And, uh, uh that was the terraforming Mars guy that he's going to teach me how to play terraforming Mars. And, um, so he was sitting there next to me and I was explaining and helping him along. Everyone else knew how to play and I actually won. But the fun, the funny, funny part about it was, and they were teasing me at the end of the game was like, well, you didn't really win. Because the guy on the other side of me, he decided to play this faction that, or this corporation, and he had a ability that he used once during the game, and it was take a um, goal card and select a goal card, put it on the table, and it allow, and that that's for everyone to use at the end of the game. And whoever got that would score five points. So I ended up beating him by one point. Oh, wow. But I'm the one that collected those five bonus points from his ability. Had he not used that, he would have beat me by four points. So he, <laughs> so he so basically beat himself. He, yeah. He, he threw the game. <laughs> By trying to win. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, and, and then everyone's teasing me. It's like, no, you didn't win. He just beat himself. And I said, you know what? It's still a win. It still shows a win in my app. And that's all that matters. Yeah. <laughs> so it doesn't matter if you win by one point or 200. It's the same outcome. You won. <laughs> yep. A W is still a W. Or, <laughs> or how you got there. As long as you didn't cheat. <laughs> exactly. That's bad so. form. Yes, yeah. it is. So I, I was just, it was nice to finally win at, at that game. But <laughs> I i absolutely just have so much fun with that game. I can't, I don't know, I can't talk it up enough. And everyone that has played it has enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. I haven't had anyone not like it yet. 
And so it's, um, yeah, it's a great game. Yeah. I can't wait to get it. <clears throat> I can't wait for you to get it. I know. Right. <laughs> um, and then I played some take five, which is also known as six nymph. And then I got to play two new games. Um, neither of which I really cared for. One was called skull, which, um, I don't know how to explain it. It's a, um, what is that called? Um, like a bluffing game. Okay. <clears throat> and I, and as and the guy was explaining it, everyone's like, Oh, it sounds like liar's dice, or it sounds like this, or it sounds like that. You basically have these, these are, they're like coasters. They're like four coasters. Three of them have like a flower on them and one has a skull on it. And so you go around the table, putting one down and I, I hope I can explain this correctly, but so like whoever puts one down, they're putting either a flower or a skull down and, and it's upside down. So like you're, it's hidden. So they're like one, they put one out, they're like one flower. So the next person, well, if they think that there's, if they're putting a flower down and that the other one's a flower, uh, then they're going to say two and you go around and you can skip. But essentially you're going around until everyone is gone, till everyone has passed. And then whoever went last, if there was a skull and, and when everybody flips their tiles, coasters over, then it's like, if there's a skull, that person loses one of their coasters and basically you're getting down to nothing. So it, it's, it, it, it was interesting at the end. At first, I was just like, I, I didn't really get it. But by the end of it, it was very interesting. So the end of the game is where the game becomes, I think, very fun. Because you're getting down to just like two or three people. And, <coughs> you know, uh, it, when it got down to the two, the one guy was just like, okay, if I put the skull down and he puts a flower down, then he could win no matter what. But if he puts the, you know, then you're kind of like, but if I put the flower down and he puts the skull down, so then you're like, you don't know what the other person's going to put down. You're trying to figure out, do you try to bluff or do you put, you know, trying to make sure that they go out and you win. And so right. it gets a little bit more interesting of what are you going to do? But at the start of it, it's just kind of like, okay, we're just laying stuff down. So wasn't really a, a fan of that type of game. Um, the other one we played, do you have a I question? Said, okay. No. Oh, the other game we played was Mexica and it's, um, it's an old game. You, yeah. Well, it's just 2002. Boy, it's hard to believe that that is old. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> that was, that was in the day of, uh, you know, like old school hobby board games yeah like right around 2000 ish yeah those of us that were playing didn't really care for it i think the people that the guy that brought it and his buddy they liked it but the other three of us didn't really care for it um but you're putting temples down and you're building water to make districts and trying to get more most points inside the districts by <clears throat> using the least amount of temples to score the most points. Um, I don't know. It just, uh, I think I might've been okay, but it was just like one of those that the, the rules weren't explained very well. And you're halfway through the game and all of a sudden someone's like, Oh, well I've blocked you. So you can't go in there. And I'm like, what do you mean? I didn't know you could block people like it. And you're like, yep. It's like, well, okay. You know, it's just like when you're not telling all the rules and you're having to learn as you go, that really kind of sucks. <laughs> yeah. So it's, um, I think that was probably the biggest problem, but, uh, yeah, it's just, uh, it's not anything I felt the need to run out and buy. That's for sure. Yeah. And it's, uh... <laughs> not that I probably could at this point, but. Yeah. Mexico's, uh, Kramer and Kiesling game that's a duo of designers that have made some like 
incredible games together. And um, what uh, Kramer is the one that did Six Nymphs. Oh, okay. So, yeah, he, he does a ton of games. I mean, like, easily like over 100, <laughs> probably in the last, you know, 20, 25 years. But that's that's what I got yeah. to play this week. So, and Mexico's also um, part of a bunch of games. Mexica. What, what did I say? Mexico. Mexico. Oh, oh Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops, my bad. Yeah, it's. Um, I think Tikal, or maybe not. It was like Java, Mexica. Yeah, Tikal, Java, and Mexica okay. are part of uh, like a series of games. And I think Mexica might be like the last one. But Tikal is really cool. I've never played Java. And then, well, I just pulled it up over here. Yeah, Tikal, Java, and Mexica. And there's another game called Torres, T-O-R-R-E-S, which is, uh, that, that's a good one too. It just recently got redone. And for all I know, recently it's like ten years ago. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I remember I was uh, I was looking because my uh, local game store that I used to go to, they always had like the original version. And then I'm, I, I would always like pick it up, put it back, pick it up, put it back, and I would never like purchase it. And then finally, they came out with the redone version. Uh, which came out with the last couple of years and I still haven't gotten it, but it's cool. It looks cool. It's one of those where you like build buildings. I guess it's the best way to describe it or castles. So as you play, you know, the, the game board definitely has this like 3d look to it. I mean, Mexico kind of does too, although it's, it's not as high. <laughs> because <laughs> the, the pieces are short ish anyway so that was it that's it for me yep that's a, that's a good list yeah I was, I was gonna make a comment I, I didn't want to interrupt you but uh yeah i love like games that have like really nice chunky dice too as you were talking yeah. about the feel of dice like there's a there's a game called seasons that's really awesome. Enjoy that game so much. Came, wow, it came out like probably 10 years ago at least. And it has these like really large plastic dice and they're so satisfying. It's like you hear them like <laughs> clinking and then you throw them. They have some substance to them. Um, on the other hand, there's a couple of games. Like I think my original game of, of, um, stone age was it stone age yeah they had yeah stone age it has these wooden dice hmm. which are nice but it's it's like it's different yeah they're so light and i mean they're the size of like regular dice you know like the regular white dice you would see like in a typical yeah. like monopoly or something they're about that size and and i know they're thematic Right, because it's Stone Age, and uh, right. <laughs> actually, it came with this very controversial leather dice cup. <laughs> Some people didn't like that. Didn't like that. <laughs> but, oh, really? Uh, Why? Just because it was leather, right? Okay. Animals, all that kind of stuff. But, uh, but, but yeah, it's so it's thematic, right? Because. Technically, I don't think they had plastic back in the Stone Age. I'm, <laughs> right. I'm just throwing it out there. It's like a a wide guess. <laughs> Couldn't but, they have just uh, ordered? They could have ordered it on Amazon. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's like some of those. And actually, there's uh, Rolf. Um, I was going to say, oh, I keep thinking Roll for the Galaxy. Roll Through the Ages. No, not Roll Through the Ages. Man, 
It's in that like same series. I'm drawing a blank on it right now. It's all right. You'll remember it. Oh yeah. Roll through the ages. That was it. Uh, that was correct after all. Cause I just looked at it. Cause I know, I know it was on my shelf right in the front, but, uh, yeah, that one has large wooden dice and they are not as satisfying. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess wooden ones aren't, but, uh, but yeah, it, it just, it just feels so good to have them and to like chuck them. And well, yeah. let me ask you this. I, I know we're kind of sidetracking talking about dice, but why not? Uh, do you use like a dice tray at all? Like at home or, or when you probably not when you go to the stores? Um, no, I, I, um, and I don't mean I a dice some- tower. I mean, no, I know. I use a dice tower for wingspan because it comes with one. Um, but I have dice trays that I use when I play. I always use a dice tray with Dice Throne. Um, because I actually bought Dice Throne trays okay. specifically for yeah. that. I do have another one that I used for my X Wing um, that I need to pack with me when I go because it is easier to throw stuff into a dice tray. Um, but it is more satisfying to throw them on the table. <laughs> you can have them yeah, go everywhere. <laughs> and have them go everywhere, knock down half the... Yeah. The, the dice can do more damage to your <laughs> board game than a cat. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, we, we had know another day. <laughs> yeah. We did that with uh, the terraforming Mars. The, the guy did something and... He rolled his dice and pieces went flying everywhere. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I was like, and he was like, Hey, where'd this go? And I said, well, we won't know. And, uh, well, something about his brutal dice throwing or something. I made some comment to him about mm-hmm. it. Oh, but yeah. It's now a moon. Uh, yeah. But it's like, uh, it's, it doesn't seem to be as satisfying when you throw it into a dice tray. Cause it's like, like you said, the sound is muted. It doesn't yeah. it doesn't have the same sound. It's it's weird. It's that whole that so that's not like the tactiles in your hand, and I, you get that, but then you throw it into this kind of muted tray that's usually padded or it's got know, like felt or felt, yeah, yeah. And so it mutes the sound. It it's not you don't get that sound that you would you know you get. I don't know how to explain. I mean, I know what everyone knows what I'm talking about. I just don't know how to explain it, but there's that satisfaction of hearing those dice rolling across the table. You know, it's like going <laughs> into a casino in Vegas. And if, if, the, if all the electronic machines were turned off, would it be fun yeah. to go into the casino? Do you know what I mean? Like imagine walking into a casino and not hearing the ding, 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 ding. And all those video machines, if they had turned the volume, if they muted every one of them, it would be a completely different experience. Yeah. Right? You can still no, play I, yeah. the game, but it would or, not be as enjoyable. Or, or, or how about a better thing? I mean, I, I get the whole casino thing. That, that definitely is a thing. But how about an arcade mm. <laughs> without any noise? Yes. Yeah, yeah. It's like you you got to have that. Yeah. So it's, um, mm-hmm. but they are really nice because it does keep your dice together. So I'm not anti dice yeah. tray, but yeah, no, I know um, what you mean. <laughs> so, and there's, um, so I've got a dice tray and it was, you know, bought at a gaming store and, um, it was marketed as such. And I found that it actually didn't hold up like the, the felt in it kind of degraded. And I mean, it's nice for what it is. It's like, hexagon shaped i believe i don't think it's octagon i don't remember but one of those two and the one that i actually enjoy the most was they make these little trays that uh they sell at places like target and you know similar home goods kind of stores but they're meant for like keys and stuff so you know, oh, okay. you would have it like, you know, let's say you have like a table by the front door, like a console table or something. And then you would like throw your keys or, you know, various little things. I mean, I guess mail could go in there as well. Those things work really nice. So, um, 
I snagged one of those and it looks it looks a lot nicer than the boring board game uh dice tray that that I bought at the store. And yeah, it's actually the, a little bit bigger. But the nicer the nice thing about the uh well is yours uh is it more of like a bowl or is no, it, does it, it's, does it it's lay rectangular. Flat yeah, it's flat. It's rectangular. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's rectangular, maybe like 12 to 14 inches long, and then probably, I don't know, maybe like 6 to 8 inches wide. Okay. Yeah, the sides maybe like an inch and a half tall. Okay. But... But yeah, th- those uh, those work as a nice alternative, and you can get very stylish ones as well. Because you know I'm stylish, of course. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's you. Yeah, for sure. So, all right. So, uh, up bringing up the main event here, that new game smell. We all know what this is. It's not just an olfactory experience. It is an experience for all the senses. <laughs> when we get yes. that new game, yeah. doesn't matter how you got it. Doesn't yeah. matter if you got it at a local store, if it came from Amazon, it was Kickstarter or whatever. They almost all do the same thing where you, you know, you crack that shrink, you yeah. open it up, you know, slide that lid off, and then you have that nice waft of, you know, uh, the boards and the ink and who knows what else, the plastics that are in there. I, hopefully they're not carcinogenic because then <laughs> we'd all be in trouble. But, uh, you know, I don't know if we've ever really talked about this, but that is like a whole experience. And um yeah, just recently I got my latest uh, city collection shipment from Queen Games. Oh yeah, I saw that that you sent me yeah. that picture. Yeah. So yeah, I got Vienna and Cuzco, which are uh five and six from that collection. They are the mega deluxified versions. Yeah. And hey, and you know what? Let, let me take a let me sidebar this real quick and just mention it because they did something weird. So I punched vienna today and so previously in the prior releases of their deluxe city collection games the games came with like really nice trays you know think like game trays you know the you know, what vacuum I no, formed i have no idea what yeah yeah are. you have no idea yeah <laughs> with you know the like the clear top like like um you know castles of burgundy yeah. Special yep. edition had them and you know a lot of games have them nowadays. Yeah. But so that's basically what I was expecting. And I noticed I'm like, wow, this is a lot smaller uh than previous ones, meaning like how much stuff there was in the box, in the shipping box, because they shipped them together. But what they did with Vienna, and I haven't opened up Cusco yet, but what they did with Vienna is they made boxes for storage. So inside the main game box, once you lift out, you know, the rules and the boards and stuff like that, you now have seven boxes in there. So there's like one box for the cards. Then there's a bunch of smaller boxes where all the components go into. So like a bunch of the boxes are roughly about one inch tall and I'll say maybe four by six ish or so. Yeah. I'd say that's a good estimation. A four by five, four by six. Mm -hmm. And then inside of them, you know, like once you open it, uh, they gave you cardboard dividers that you assemble and put in there. So maybe like, let's say it divides the inside of the box into four quadrants now Mm -hmm. and then you'd put your different pieces in the four quadrants in the four corners so yeah it was um it was interesting to see because i've never seen 
a company do that? You know, usually the, usually inside the box, you'll have two things, either one, you'll have some, you know, formed inserts, right. Or you'll have the cardboard inserts. Right. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes they don't even call them inserts. They're there just for shipping, <laughs> just to keep stuff from yeah. like rattling around and shipping. And you can actually safely toss that stuff. Cause usually it doesn't, it's so generic that it doesn't really hold the game well, but, um, but yeah, it was just interesting to me that, you know, they went a different route and I really don't know how I feel about it yet. I, when I play one of the games for the first time, I'll probably see how well it goes. But, um, the annoying, one annoying thing about it is that it really tells you on the bottom of those little boxes, what goes inside of them. So. Oh, that's so nice. Well, it, 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 on the bottom outside. Oh, Okay, not the bottom inside. Okay. So, so you're kind of like looking, it's like I lift it up and I look underneath it. Okay, all right, those pieces need to go in there. And um, so what we'll, we'll, it's a new departure from the norm. Uh, I appreciate the storage solution. It's probably better than just having like a box of everything ro rolling around in there by itself, but um, we'll, we'll see how it goes. But anyway. Like Orleans. Yeah. <laughs> but um but yeah so yeah punching the games is just a whole experience it's i it, it's almost like i need some alone time close the door <laughs> <laughs> put the music on <laughs> put the music on you know light a scented candle <laughs> <laughs> Put on the robe, oh, put on the robe, and then whoa, go whoa, and whoa, punch, whoa. <laughs> punch punch the game, <laughs> or or, uh, or sweater. I'm, hey, I don't know what you're thinking. I'm thinking like Mister Rogers yeah. kind of stuff here. Uh -huh. <laughs> but <laughs> but was, you went too far with the robe. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not with the scented candle. <laughs> no, and, that was fine. <laughs> and dimming the lights. Actually, no, you can't dim the lights because then you can't no. see the colors. And, and you don't want to actually use a scented candle because you don't want to take away the scent of the new game. Smell. That's true. Maybe, dude, that's unscented oh, candle. Marketing opportunity. How about a candle that smells like fresh board game? There you go. Oh, yeah. Forget the bacon <laughs> ones. Oh, forget that. Those just make you hungry. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, there's, there's just something just, it's like, I just love that experience. It's like a couple of different things, right? So first of all, you get that smell of, of everything. And maybe it's like even more so because you're punching pieces and maybe, you know, out of like the, what sprues or whatever they call them. So you're punching the pieces out and maybe that makes it smell even more because you know, you're exposing the fresh cardboard. Yeah. yeah. And at the same time, you know, it's like you're going through everything and you're sorting. It's, it's almost like therapeutic. <laughs> you, you know what I'm uh, saying. Until you get to the storage solution part, yeah. like castles of Burgundy special edition, like that became a chore. Like, yeah, it wasn't fun anymore. I had to go look look up a picture online. Like, where does this crap go? <laughs> That's a fault of the publisher, though, I think. <sighs> yeah. They ruined my new game smell experience. You know, because, I mean, that's one thing I don't understand. It's like, couldn't they just throw in? I mean, it doesn't even need to be fancy, glossy paper. Just have a sheet that kind of shows you where... if. If you yeah. purpose make a, a tray or an insert to hold specific things, just have like a little graphic or even like a QR code or something on the website that says, Hey, this is where the stuff goes. Yep. Make it user friendly. Yeah. Because yeah, I, I would rather know where to put stuff rather than keep 
trying, oh, like, let me put it here. Oh, there's too many pieces. You know, it, it doesn't fit all 12 pieces. I can only fit 11. <laughs> let me find the <laughs> other spot where these can go. And that that is a little annoying for sure. Or a chore. But, but yeah, there, there's just something just awesome about like just punching the stuff and looking at the pieces. Do you, do you find yourself doing that too? You know, it's like you're looking at the components and. I, I think you might spend a little more time doing that than I do. <laughs> well, I'm not saying I sit there and I like fawn over it. <laughs> I, I usually just um, punch it and then try to find a neat way to put it away. Like I like bagging, putting the stuff in baggies, rubber banding the cards, um, you know, putting everything away neatly. Uh, it annoys me when it's not neat in yeah. the box. That's why I just got a whole bunch of uh, game trays in trying to organize Orleans because everything was just, everything was in a bag, but it was just a whole bunch of baggies in a box. It's like, oh, this annoys me. So game trays will, will help with that, but not, not completely. <laughs> were, were those generic trays or were they specific to that game? Well, they're game trays brand, but they're just standard. I'm just, yeah. you know, they're, so they're just one, twos, fours, and sixes. I got you. you. Know, to, so I was looking at what I have and yeah, this should fit in the, like all my deluxe components and my little wine bottles and cheese slices and meat. <laughs> it's like that could all fit into like a, a tray of six, that old six things. So, and it, it fits in nice and puts the lid on and leaves everything in its own little compartment. Love them. Mm -hmm. So. And then you got the cards. I'd say this is like one thing that is uh, a little annoying is when they shrink wrap the cards and then oh. it's, it's not the one that has a little tearaway strip, but it's, they're just like shrink wrapped. And then you're sitting there like picking at the edge, trying to lift that corner to tear it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Dude, I have the same, I have that problem with the ones with the tearaway strips. Like I can never <laughs> like, like the yeah. little tearaway is not, it's like, it's pressed in. It's like, okay, I can see where I'm supposed to lift this up and it doesn't lift. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Those annoy me. So I usually have a, it's, um, maybe, I have my maybe leather it's... at my desk. So I usually okay. just pull the knife out and cut it. <laughs> I got, yeah. Don't mess with that garbage. <laughs> yeah. I was, and I was going to say like, usually when you, when you start like trying to punch the game and you, you're dealing with the cards like that, you just cut your fingernails a day before. <laughs> so it's like, you got yeah. nothing. <laughs> you got nothing to. That's why you got to have a game knife nearby. Yeah. So. Or a teenager. It's like, here, now, open us. <laughs> they'll they'll does... destroy it. <laughs> <clears throat> does your um do, when does your experience begin you mean this whole thing this whole thing of your new game when does it start where I do you say, start to feel like <gasps> like that excitement that rush when you're when you're opening the box lid when you first when you're pulling stuff out is it when you start your first punch I, I, no, I would say it starts with the UPS driver wrap. showing up. <laughs> <laughs> it starts with clicking checkout. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you, you were right. You had me that you were on the same page. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's, uh, I want to take the shrink wrap off the box. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I hate when boxes, you get the boxes that are taped. That annoys me. Oh, that's like a retail thing. Recent. I too. know. I hate that. Yeah. Cause the tape rips your box. So then it it's does. like, okay, I got to cut this, but now I have two half pieces of tape on each side of my box and that yeah. drives me nuts, but you can't really peel it off as it ruins yeah. your box. Yeah. Sometimes if you go slow, you're okay. 
Yeah. But yeah, maybe you need to like get out the hair dryer then, or something. But then even <laughs> then it still leaves sticky residue. Yeah. So it's like it's kind of a no win situation. But I love ripping I love taking shrink wrap off. That's the best. That's when it's that's like the and it was funny because last week or two weeks ago I bought um that Seven Wonders Architects. Yeah. When I went to the game night, bought that. <laughs> <clears throat> went downstairs it was still on the shrink wrap and one of these other people that i was telling you about earlier <laughs> um he he came over and he's like hey can i look through what you brought and i'm like yeah that's fine the next thing i know he pulled a game one of my games out and was playing it at another table what and i'm like yeah yeah i'm like i didn't say you could play my stuff so then then they put the game away and I come back to get my stuff later because we'd had I already had pulled another game out. We were already playing at my table. And I see all this like plastic wrap in my in my bag. And I was like, I thought the guy had opened up my seven architects wonder game. And dude, I was instantly pissed. Like, you ruined my experience. <laughs> but it turns out it was the it, it was the saran wrap I had on my Planet Unknown Lazy Susan, which he didn't put back. He just threw everything back in the box. <clears throat> so, but it was interesting because I was like, oh, yeah. I was so, I was so happy to realize he didn't cut the plastic off my new game. Yeah. And I was, I was so relieved when I realized what it was. And, and I was like, wow, that's kind of pathetic, isn't it? I, I was instantly angry <laughs> because he no, ruined that's my rude. experience. <laughs> well, yeah, but beyond that, it was just like, I took it as this ruining of my experience yeah. of opening this game the first time by someone taking the shrink wrap off. It was just like, so that's right. That's where it kind of starts with me. Yes, I do get excited. It, and really it probably is when I get that email that says your Amazon driver <laughs> dropped the package out, off. Oh, I was, I was going to say, is it <clears> out, for, out delivery? for delivery? <laughs> yeah. Maybe it's the out for delivery. Cause then you're waiting. It's like, my dogs will run off barking and I go upstairs and I do, I open my door. Ah, oh, crap. No package yet. Yeah. So I think Actually, it starts at the yeah. upper delivery <laughs> notification. You're right. Or that's uh, where it begins. Yeah. Or I got a thing. Uh, was it earlier this week? I think it was Monday. I don't think it was last week, but I got an email uh, from DHL and I'm like, Ooh, <laughs> cause you know, yeah. that's like, that's come from Germany. <laughs> yep. I don't think I've ever had DHL deliver anything <laughs> that hasn't been from Europe. <laughs> yep. Yep. I think one of my yeah. coins, my game, my package of coins. No, that actually went to the, that actually went through us mail. That's right. Cause I had to go down there and sign for it. Oh, um, at the post office. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, the stuff I've had seen where it was like DHL delivered did, it. It was, it was a board game. Did you have to um, declare the currency for the IRS? <laughs> yeah, they probably, oh, that's money. Like, no, it's not. <laughs> it says one, five, 10 and 20 on it and they're coins. Yeah. Mm, it, okay. It says right here. So, well, that's fine. Um, but, but yeah, it, I, I think for me, it definitely begins, uh, you know, cutting the shrink. And then I'm usually like really careful about that too. It's like, you know, you don't want to nick the box or, or anything like that. And then, you know, sliding the cup, co the cover off. And then it's like, Ooh, what's in here? And it's like, Oh, how many boards? Oh, how did, you know, um, you know, what's the, the tray system look like? Yeah. And all that. And it's, uh, it, it is quite the experience and, and it is annoying when there isn't any kind of storage system in there or you just get that roll of bags. You know what I'm talking about? It's like you get that rubber banded roll of yep. 10 bags. <laughs> I like awesome. when they provide that. Yeah. Yeah. I like when that, because then it's like, otherwise I'm going and buying expensive Ziploc bags and it's like, I like, cause these bags are like, you know, you get the smaller ones that fit the components instead of using like a quart size. Oh, <laughs> that's dude. like 18 times the space, you know, size that you larger than you need. Dude, here's a pro tip. 
Rob pro tip. You ready? I'm ready. If you go to like Michael's or maybe Joanne fabrics, like one of those two definitely has it. I, you can get okay. these. They're like little crafting bags. I think I want to say that they sell them around where they have the beading stuff. Okay. And so you can get them in a couple of different sizes and, and they're reasonably cheap. I mean, they were just, you know, like five, six, seven bucks, or maybe like a box of a hundred. And then, uh, the thing that makes it even easier to use, have a hole punch you know, just like for paper. So, yep. um, one thing I like to do with some games, especially when they have a lot of bags is I like to punch the bag so that, you know, you can like press all the air out of it. Yeah, that is, <clears throat> I do like that. And I see a lot of the ones I get have that little hole in it. Yeah. But and it is nice. It's that, <laughs> yeah, removes all that yeah. air and it doesn't take up the space in the box. Yeah. I mean, not that it's a huge deal to, you know, flatten the bag with the stuff inside of it, right? As you zip it up, but you don't need to. <laughs> If, yeah. if you pop a little hole in there and the hole punches while they don't always do like a super clean hole, but, uh, they, you know, it's a big enough hole where, you know, you're not sitting there and it's like going, you know, you're like, not like pressing <laughs> the air out. It's hissing, but, uh, but yeah, ch yeah. Check out, um, uh, the bags that they might have at like Michael's. They got those out by you, right? Yes, we get, yeah, we yeah. got them. Yeah. And uh, I forgot what we were talking about. Yeah, just uh Yeah, just sitting there like punching everything and oh, I had a horrific experience. I may as well talk about this. Um, okay. So, we were playing with kids and I had just gotten a new game. And my friend grabbed you know the stuff and then he like gave a sheet to each of the kids and he's like oh and she's no. out and i'm like no <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's like leaping over the table in slow motion shouting no <laughs> and they were the kids were little <laughs> single digits yeah <laughs> and I, I appreciate the, you know, it was well-intentioned, but, yep. you know, I had visions of every pieces, every piece having tears. <laughs> yes. Because, yes. because, you know, like, uh, they, or at they least don't always do. punch clean. No, but it's like, I have a way of punching because you have to punch it in a certain direction and you kind of get a feel for the resistance on if it's going to tear or not. You, you know what I'm talking about? Like, yeah, the, the games nowadays are a lot better than they used to be. Cause I think they're a lot better with doing the dies that cut the, that cut the boards. Uh huh. But you know, there are some where they like, don't do such a good job of, I mean, they go through the top layer, you know, the top print layer, they go through the board, but they don't cleanly cut the board all the way around. So it's like, you have to kind of finesse it out. And if you do it really fast, it'll rip. And right. And it's like, you don't know if it'll rip into the, piece or the chit or whatever or if it'll rip into the sprue if it rips into the you know the bigger piece that's fine you know because then you can always trim it but but yeah it's um uh, yeah that's that's one thing that i'm always like really careful of because i just want it to be nice because it's my game it's special to me <laughs> Yes. Doesn't mean I like it. Doesn't mean I and like dude, the game. One yeah. one little piece that gets torn, you will know. You will know it, and it will ruin their enjoy, enjoyment. And 
it's uh it's like i've i've actually i had that happen and i've actually like maybe i should buy another copy <laughs> <laughs> and replace it just to replace that one that one piece they ripped yeah it's like no i'll try to deal with it i'll just deal with it by never playing the game <laughs> <laughs> It's the ding and dent section of your shelf. Exactly. There you go. <laughs> yeah. So. No, it's. Yeah, it's. Um, oh, and, and another aspect that I like is I. I think it's fun to put some stuff together. You know what I mean? Like if. If. um Let's say some games have like little trays or they have like the spinning wheels. Do you know what I mean? Where it's like you have to put like multiple pieces together and there's usually like a a thing in the, like if it's a spinning wheel, then there's like the little plastic insert that Ah. like holds it together. Sometimes I've actually had one game where it was a screw. I'm not a fan of that. No. <laughs> no. What those pieces or assembling? Just assembling stuff. Okay. Cuz it's it's the not board game like... life is looking for a new host. <laughs> 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 this is Mark's last show. <laughs> All right, no, I'm out of here. Bye. <laughs> no, what were you going to say? <laughs> oh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh man. <Be> out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, like I think my my main experience with those has been like like with X Wing trying to put those dials together, and you have that little like one plastic piece like snaps into another little one in the middle, so that you got your little spinny dial, and yeah, it's like those things never line up right, and you're trying to uh. mash your fingers together to get them to click in, and it's just I hate I, I hate those things, so. Yeah, because some games have a ton of them. Yeah, I'm I'm thinking like those games that have just like one. Yeah, but I'm it, not a fan. <laughs> yeah, okay, that, that's that's fine. <laughs> some assembly, some assembly required. Actually, actually, does that mean that board games do have assembly required? Because is yeah, they punch, do. Is punching considered assembly? Well. So, for example, just like with Orleans, I'm planning to take that with me tonight. You got probably a good 10, 15 minute setup just to get everything out, everything, all the boards Mm -hmm. out, the the pieces in the right places, and you set everything on the board. And, you know, some of these games, yeah, some assemblies required no matter what, whether you're physically putting pieces together or not, still takes some time to prep. I guess you can call it prep time and not assembly time but Mm -hmm. you're you're still getting the game ready do you do any player setup at all and and what i mean by that is like what i'll do is i'll divide the colors up in the game the player colors you know red green blue yellow for example yeah those are all separated and and then i'll take one of my bags that i got from michael's (laughs) and (laughs) And then I'll put all of the components for that player in that bag. So if, if my Orleans dice, is set up that way, okay. they have every, everything of that one players is in one bag. Yep. That's nice. Yeah. Cause then you can go like, here, here's your stuff. <laughs> yep. And they're all set. They have everything that they need. Like the money I'll, I'll even do that. Like if, if a person starts with, let's say like two coins, they have two dice in their color, little figure, whatever, it all goes in that bag. So they have everything. Oh, uh, now you're asking a lot. Me to no, see ooh. the fact that you said that, like kind of just gave me this, Oh, uh, like ADD thing or OCD. Why? <laughs> chill. Like the money needs to be together. <laughs> <laughs> I can't have it separated in the box. It, like, no, <laughs> You, it, they all come together. They they get to play with their friends until they got to go into the hands of a gamer, uh-huh. and then they're separated. But no, they can't you, be separate in a box. You, you just reminded me of. Uh, do you remember something about Mary? That movie. Yeah. 
with Harlan Ellison and uh, Ben Stiller when they're driving. And then the guy's like, you know, I have a thing, six minute abs. <laughs> oh yeah. And, he, and he's, and then Ben Stiller goes, well, couldn't somebody just come up with five minute abs? And he, and then Harlan Ellison kind of short circuits. It's like, no, <laughs> <You're> fired. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, I just envisioned you short circuiting when you heard <laughs> that the money was separated. <laughs> uh, you just, yeah, it's just like I don't know. It's yeah. like all of a sudden, I had this physical reaction. I was like, oh, no, <laughs> I got to come to Rob's house and fix that. <laughs> yeah, you go through all my all my shelves and <laughs> you put all the money together. Yep. <laughs> oh, that's or you. You, uh, you probably. Uh, you probably, when you get money and you have bills, you probably just throw them in your wallet and you don't even care. It's like me, they have to be in sequential order. They all have to be facing the same way. They all have to be upright. <laughs> oh, the, oh, I, okay. I was thinking you said like bills that I have to pay. I ignore those. <laughs> no cash. <laughs> you yeah. Have cash in your wallet. Yeah. It's like, you know, some people just like, they'll hand it to you. Some's upside down. Some are backwards. Some. Yeah. You know, there's a single, a 20, a five. No, it's like, no, organize people. Yeah. The ones and the ones and fives and tens and twenties, and then make sure that they're facing the right direction and they're all the same, same face. Yeah. It has to be all the same way. No, I, I do that as well. Okay. It's, yeah. It's, it's a lot easier to pay for stuff when you're not like, is there a 20 in here? <laughs> <laughs> not that I have a whole lot of cash to begin with, but yeah, yeah. Who all, carries cash anymore, right? All all my cash is converted into board games, <laughs> and they're on my shelves. You know, there people you buy gold. Uh, <laughs> you buy like, board games. Yeah, people buy gold uh, to uh, you know protect their wealth. I do that with board games, and I'm eye rolling right now. <laughs> oh, Actually. On a on a side note, I saw some one of those little uh, clickbaity um, things on Facebook, which is all I appear to get now. It's, yeah, it's like I don't. I rarely get like, oh, this is what Mark's doing today. I mean, I get this occasionally, but almost everything is like some it's kind all of like clickbaity thing to get me to go to some sponsored site. And yeah, and and one and all the sponsored sites are basically like ad farms. So, yeah, one of the things was uh, hobbies that don't. It's like hobbies that people had that are basically like worthless now, and they showed like somebody with a model train set, you know, like the you know with the landscapes and everything like that and right it was basically i mean i didn't read the article because i'm i'm like i'm not clicking on you <laughs> i'm not giving them ad revenue heck no heck no but i was kind of wondering i'm like huh i wonder if board games are part of that as well but uh yeah what know. are what are game be game collections be like worthless in 10 years 20 years or whatever worthless to others yeah like to our kids yeah yeah when when we kick it they'll be like board game collection 20 bucks all thousand games <laughs> get it out of here Haley, <laughs> Haley's already told me like i need to get rid of it before i go <laughs> i'm not to i'm not to leave this behind <laughs> oh <laughs> they don't want to deal with it nice it's like, yeah, thank you. Appreciate that. <laughs> oh. So basically what we need to do is give our collections to each other. There you go. <laughs> yeah, because our kids won't appreciate them. Shelves included. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> that would be so. rude. I leave Rob my game collection. Sands <laughs> the shelves. <laughs> ah, suck it, Rob. <laughs> No, I don't have any more floor space, <laughs> let alone yeah. shelf space. Man. Oh man. Yeah. But is, is there any other part of the experience that we haven't talked about that is like, uh, 
<coughs> like enjoyable or special to you? Um, I think I did get an injury from board games. Yeah, paper cut. It's it, it's an unhealthy sport. <laughs> okay. Um, hold on. Sorry, I had a big cough coming. Um, so I have like a pulled tendon in my left thumb. Okay. And I know it's yeah. from sleeving cards. Because I would take like my thumb and index finger and put the the sleeve like in between and like just like slide it to open slide it. Slide it to open it. And it after doing a bunch of those, it's like my thumb got so sore. And now I've got a a brace that I have to wear. I like to wear it at night trying to rest that tendon. The doctor said that I have pulled that tendon. <laughs> and it's and it's not from like video game controllers? Um, I don't know because I've been doing that for so long and I, and I know when I was doing the sleeving that that was killing me to, to, to do sleeves. Okay. So I, I equate it to that. Don't come at my video games. Bro. I think, no, I think number one led to number two. <laughs> yeah. No, number, number one's not innocent. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> No, 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 I can't hear you. Can't hear you. It's called building up a tolerance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> number one should have helped me with number two. <laughs> yeah. yeah so, it's true. So I do think I sustained an injury from sleeving. So I don't sleeve cards. Yeah, I, I stopped that as well. I've got like my whole Dominion set sleeved. And that's Dominion and... I want to say like probably every expansion that came out in the first probably five, six years of Dominion, which is quite a few. Oh yeah. And now I have this huge collection that won't fit in any of the Dominion boxes. <laughs> so I had to buy yeah. like a whole separate, um, there's just like travel art travel case that people buy from Hobby Lobby and put, they put board games in there or card games. in there. Oh, okay. And so I've got that all in there, but, yeah, since then, yeah, no more sleeving. And then even if I get a game that comes with sleeves, I look at them like, Ugh. if they're really nice, maybe, yeah. I will sleeve my Dice Throne X-Men when it comes next year. But that's because I paid, like, never mind, a lot of money for it, and they came <laughs> with the sleeves. Yeah, you don't want to know. It's just a bunch. A, a couple lots of monies. A couple two three dollars, yeah. And then, well, so then the last thing that I would probably say, at least for me, the satisfying things is when you're done and then you slide that cover back on and it fits nice. Yeah. And then you can put the game on the shelf. Now it's like it's done, it's sorted. It's ready to play and uh, it'll sit there for the next five years until it comes out to play for the first time. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And then, oh, and I, I've learned as well um, before I throw anything away, I'll sit there and I'll look at every punched um, skeleton <laughs> of the sprues. And just to make sure that there's no pieces left. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, you got to make sure you don't miss something. Yeah. Cause sometimes, especially if you're like going through it kind of quickly, like if you're in a time crunch, like, yeah, I got 15 minutes. Let me punch this game. And then you realized it was going to take you longer because there's too many like small coins and stuff like that. Yeah. You don't want to throw out something, especially like if it's something like super important in the game. But yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that new game experience, it's got a lot to it <laughs> and, uh, and it's funny that a lot of us like really enjoy that and it, cause it's a thing. I definitely know it's a thing. Oh yeah. With a lot of gamers. It's so, part of the experience. Yeah. I bet. So I bet like some people that are so 
you get people that are like gamers and some people that are sometimes a little more collectors than they are gamers. And I, I bet maybe for the collectors, it's, it's a, it's a big part of the ownership experience. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah. So, so anyway, do you have anything else you wanted to add? Uh, no, I'm good. good. Okay. I think that's it. <laughs> All right. So shall we wrap it up here? I don't even know how long. Uh, we're in our 15. So. Oh, wow. That's yeah. a good amount of time. Holy yep. smokes. And I got to get, I got to get headed out here yeah. shortly to my game night. So. All right, man. Okay. So hey, thanks for listening, everybody. Uh, this is, was, was episode number 59. Uh, catch you all in two weeks. All right. And uh, I am Mark and we'll see you at the table. <laughs>